Will you help me please welcome Pastor Venetia? Amen. Amen. I got a mic. <laughs> Amen. Let's see. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I just want to be obedient. Um, Debbie Cosio, can you come up? Is she here? Yeah, and can we have the pastors come? We're going to lay hands on her. I know I have hands already. Come on, pastors. Let's touch and agree. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm. Father, we come before you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, first we ask, Father, for forgiveness of all of our sins, Lord. Father, Lord God, fire, 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 fire. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that you are the God that healeth thee, Lord. We speak healing in our lungs right now, Lord. Father God, you give us breath, Lord God, an abundance of breath right now, Lord. Breathe on her, Father God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that she can breathe at ease, Lord. We bind up, Father, infirmity, sickness, and disease right now. Now, Father, we stand on Psalms 91, Lord, that no weapon formed against her shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that she will not be hindered. She will not be moved, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for ease breathing, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for the anointing upon her life, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for destroying this now, Lord, demolishing it now, Lord. We plead the blood. We plead the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus upon her lungs, upon her body, her in word heart parts right now father and we thank you lord that she is healed by your stripes in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen amen, amen. amen. thank you father oh, amen and tisha is tisha still in here did she walk out when she comes back i have a word for her or yeah tisha no, okay, it's okay, okay. So let's all stand, amen. I feel it thick in here. We got to break this, amen. We got, I can't do it all by myself. You got to help me break this. We got to push through. We want breakthrough, but we don't want to push through. We got to push through to get our breakthrough. We got to lift our hands. We got to shout out to God. We got to cry out to the Lord. We got to push through. We got to shout, God help us. God shout, God deliver us. God save us. God help us. Let us rest, Lord God. We need you, Father, in our life. You got to push through for your breakthrough. Woo! Come on, make it easy for the preacher. Lord. We thank you, Father God, that we'll exalt your name this morning, Lord, for giving us peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. I bind oppression. I bind depression. I bind the spirit of anxiety in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray peace here, Father. I pray deliverance here, Father. I pray breakthrough here, Lord. I pray to Shuva, Father, that they would turn unto you, Father. I pray, Father God, that they would exalt you, Lord, that they would not run from you, Father, but unto you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. We're going to be reading from Jonah 
But first, I want to read uh, 1 Corinthians 9.22. You know, God will use what you do to speak right to you. What you do, your trade, if you're gardening, he'll use that. If you're working on your car, he'll use that. He'll speak to you in the simplest way. God will use the simplest things to speak to you today, and I'm going to show you that later in this message. It's hilarious, but I'll show you later in this message. But I want to start off in 1 Corinthians 9, 22, and it says, To the weak I became weak, to win the weak. This is Paul talking. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. Jonah 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amity, saying, This book is so rich. When I read this, the Lord goes, it's rich. That means, Benicia, you're missing a lot of stuff. Go back and keep reading. Verse 2, and it says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. So this is the Lord speaking to Jonah in verse 1. Verse 2 he speaks to him, and watch verse 3. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid there the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And watch verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Look, from verse 1 to verse 4, let me just stop right there. The Lord speaks to him in verse 1, and by verse 4, there's already a storm. Already a storm comes. Why? Because he didn't listen. A storm came, and it came quickly. I just went from 1 to 4, and a storm came. When you don't listen to the Lord, when you hear, thus saith the Lord, when the Lord speaks to you, and then you turn away, and go the other way, watch out, because a storm is going to come. Here in this word, it came right away. We think that we cannot listen to the Lord and go our way, and a storm isn't going to hit us. We're not going to go through turbulence. We're not going to go through fire and troubles. We're going to go through, why? Because we didn't take heed, and we didn't listen to the Lord. So now here in verse 4, it's already happening to Jonah. He's already getting rocked. Everything's already getting all messed up. Why? Because he didn't listen to the Lord. The Lord spoke to him. The Lord trusted him. The Lord gave him a call to do. The Lord was going to use him, and he said, nope, I'm going the other way. Jonah was not afraid of the Assyrians. The Assyrians, picture this, 600,000 Assyrians he was to go to. These Assyrians were brutal and violent, but Jonah was one bad dude because the Lord was going to send him in all by himself, one prophet to speak to these violent people, and he wasn't afraid of them. He was afraid that God would have mercy on them, but he wasn't afraid of them. And when God calls us to speak to one person, we don't want to do it. And he spoke to 600,000, marched around the city, wasn't afraid of one of them. All of them were wicked. They were violent. Nope, Jonah didn't care. He was going to do it, but he didn't want to do it because he didn't want God to have mercy, but not because he feared. Verse 5, it says, Then the mariners were afraid and cried, Every man unto his God, and cast forth wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the hold of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. Fast asleep. Imagine that in a storm. We'll go back to that. So the shipmasters came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we would not perish. And they said, everyone to his fellow come and let us cast lots that we may know. You know, the Bible says that man may cast the lots, but God, I, the Lord, know where they fall. That's Proverbs 16, 33. In other words, you'll do what you want to, but I know where you're going to fall, or I know what's going to happen. I know how it's going to go down. I know. Yet, so you can go ahead and do whatever you want, but I know. And this is what the lots were saying. We know who did it. It fell right on Jonah. 
And verse 8, it says, Then they said, Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for those cause this evil is upon us. What is thy occupation? And whence comest thou? And whence the country? And what the people art thou? And if you go on to read the book of Jonah, it's a very short book. It says a storm came. They cast lots. They knew it was him. They threw him out of the ship. A big fish comes and gets him. He's in the belly of the fish for three days. The fish then spits him up to where he's supposed to go in the first place anyways, right? And I read 1 Corinthians 9.22 because I'm going to go somewhere with this. In the Bible, Matthew was a tax collector. Peter was a fisherman. Luke was a doctor. Paul was a tent maker. Lydia made fine purple linen. Adam was a zoologist. And Jonah, he was a prophet. The Assyrians were violent and they were brutal. And he, God was sending a prophet to go to those that were violent and brutal. But the Assyrians were also inventors. And the Assyrians invented the first lock and key. I found that very interesting because Jonah was going to be used not only as a prophet to go into Nineveh, but he was going to use, be used also as a locksmith. And he was going to go in there and he was going to preach, judgment is coming, judgment is coming, you better repent. In other words, he was saying, you need to repent, you need to repent. And God was going to use him as a locksmith because when you speak repentance, that's like a key that opens opens the door to mercy and shuts the door on judgment. And he was going to be used to go in as a locksmith and preach repentance. If you want to get out, if you don't want judgment, repent, repent. God will use me as a locksmith today to let you know to repent. What am I doing? I'm giving you the key. The key to what? The key to overcome. The key to get out. The key for the door to open. The key to repent. So that door of judgment can be shut and the door of mercy can be open. Woo! The Assyrians were also, they also invented the first mail system. I found that very interesting. The first postal system. And the Lord was going to use Jonah like a mail man and he was going to read their mail. Have you ever had someone come to you and they read your mail? They came up to you and said, Thus saith the Lord, turn from your ways. God says, Don't do it. God says, Leave it. God says, Drop it. Don't smoke. Don't drink. Don't take this no more. Has somebody ever been used like a mailman to come to you and read your mail? Imagine they can't get mad at the mailman. That's a message from heaven. They understood the postal service. They couldn't get mad at the mailman for preaching what God had wrote down for the prophet to speak. That he had a word for them and he was just the mailman. Woo. They also invented the first plumbing system. Woo. Jonah was going to come in and he was going to have their pipes cleaned out. In other words, how can you make a joyful noise if your pipes are full of bitterness and hatred and jealousy and insecurity and wickedness? How can you make a joyful noise if your pipes are all dirty and filth comes out of your mouth and vile comes out of your mouth? How can you do? So he was going to be used as a plumber to go do some plumbing so they can flush that stuff out and they can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. They can sing a new song unto the Lord. They can, they can praise him. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. They also invented a scribe. They also invented a system that kept time and ascribed 360 degrees to a circle. Imagine that. So here comes Jonah as a timekeeper, letting them know it's time. The Lord is sending me here today. Tomorrow is not promised to everyone. The Lord is sending me here to let today to let you know that it's time, that it's time. Be careful. Judgment is coming. Don't do it. Turn, be ye holy as I am holy. Jonah was sent in 
as a timekeeper to tell them it was time to turn away, make a 360 degrees turn, turn back unto the Lord. He was sent in as a timekeeper. Woo, they also invented the first iron. Come on, he's looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. Come on, he's looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. Some of you got to iron it out. Some of you got to get it out. Some of you are wrinkled in your sin. Some of you are spotted in your blemishes of sin. And God wants to get it out. He wants to iron it out. Woo. So Jonah goes the other way. He didn't listen to God, right? Stiff neck. Stiff neck. Won't look up, won't look down, won't look to the right, and won't look to the left. Stiff neck. Won't look up and hear God. Won't look up and say, sorry, God. Won't look up and say, Father, yes, I'll do it, no matter how, what it costs. Yes, Father, I'll go that way. Yes, even though I don't want to, I'll humble myself. Won't look up. Won't look to the right. Won't listen to the elder of the church. Won't listen to godly advice. Won't look to the left. Won't hear what your spiritual father or your mother is saying. And won't look down. Won't surrender yourself unto the Lord. No, stiff neck. You're going to do it your way. You're going to go your Watch out. The storm's going to come. Watch out. A storm's going to catch you if you go your way. If you're stiff neck. If you don't want to yield unto the Lord. Woo. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to go the wrong way. Samson didn't listen to the Lord, and he missed it, and he went the wrong way. And because he went the wrong way, he was blind. He became blind. And because he went the wrong way, he lost his strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You don't want to be like Samson and miss it and go the wrong way and become blind because you didn't listen. Now you're blinded to the things of God. You don't want to be like Samson where you don't have strength anymore. You're not strong anymore in the Lord because you lost your strength because you turned the other way. You don't want to be like Samson and miss it. Miss all the opportunities that God has given you because you want to do your own thing, satisfying your flesh. Come on, get shut the flesh up. Woo! I'm not here to tickle your ears. I'm here to save you from hell. Let it be the truth. Let it be the truth. You don't want to miss it. If I asked somebody for directions, they would say go right and then go left, wouldn't they? Go right and then go left. But there is no right and left with God. There's only the right way or the wrong way. Right way or the wrong way. You don't want to miss it. Lot's wife turned around and she missed it. And because she turned and didn't listen to the Lord, her family was lost. Her family was torn apart. Incest came in. Perversion came in because she turned and she missed it. You don't want to turn and let the enemy come in and touch your family and lose your husband because you didn't listen and because you turned and you missed it. Moses didn't listen. Moses struck the rock instead of speaking to the rock. If he just would have spoke to the rock and not struck the rock, but he struck the rock and because he did that, he missed the promised land. You don't want to miss it and miss the promised land. Saul didn't listen. And because Saul didn't listen, he lost the kingdom. He lost his family. He lost his palace. His children died. Oh, come on now. You don't want to miss it like Saul missed it and miss out on the kingdom things of God. You don't want to miss it like Saul missed it and lose your family and your family perishes because you turned and you did what you wanted to do. I wore, my, I wore my slippers this morning in the car. And I went to put on my shoes. Well, guess what? I have two wrong shoes on. But won't the Lord use the foolish things to confine the wise? I have two different shoes on. So one is pointing this way and one is pointing that way. That means I'm going to be torn in my walk. 
Because why? Because I have two different, one shod with the gospel and one shod with the world. I have two different shoes on. So now I'm going two different ways. When our feet are called to be shod with the gospel, now that I walk. This other shoe that doesn't fit my foot, guess what? Now my foot's hurting. When you don't listen to God and you decide to put on your own shoe, guess what? You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to be hurting because you put on the wrong shoe. You put on your worldly shoe and your worldly garment and you forgot to put on your feet shod with the gospel and now you're walking around and wondering why your hurt got on the wrong shoes, people of God. And then, if I keep wearing this, my foot could even become disfigured. Woo! I, my foot could even become disfigured. In other words, you keep going the way you want to. One foot in the world and one foot in the things of God. And pretty soon, you're going to start looking disfigured. Pretty soon, you're going to be walking funny because now you're hurt because you've been wearing the wrong shoe and now you're looking disfigured because you haven't took it off and you wanted to wear it even though it hurts you, even though it wounded you. You can bandage it up and then it'll grow a callus and it'll become hard and then you'll get used to wearing that shoe that you shouldn't have been wearing. You need to take off the shoes. You need to get them off. You need to let it go. Woo! All of a sudden, now I have freedom. I have freedom now. All of a sudden, my foot doesn't hurt anymore. All of a sudden, now I'm not going to get a cut. I'm not going to get a wound. I'm not going to be hurt. Why? Because I took off what wasn't of me. Hey, don't put no armor on me, Saul. I'm going to wear what God has called me to wear. I'm going to wear what the Lord has called me to wear because I need to fight, and I don't want to be hurt in the fight. Woo! Whoa. It says that he paid. Check this out. He paid to get on the boat. He paid a price to go the other way. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He paid a price to go the other way. When you decide to go your way, you're going to pay a price. <laughs> when you decide, so he gets on the ship, and what happens? The ship begins to rock, right? All that were on the ship, they didn't sin against the Lord. They weren't the ones that were spoken to. They're not the ones that went the other way. It was Jonah, but because Jonah went the other way and sinned against the Lord, the whole boat was being rocked. That's right. That's right. If you, one of you, decide to go the other way in your house, the boat's going to be rocked. If one of your children go the other way, the boat's going to, come on, the boat's going to be rocked. If one of you are offended and jealous in ministry, guess what? The ministry is going to be rocked. If one of you are committing adultery in your marriage, guess what? Your marriage is going to be rocked. But not only rocked, it said that the boat was about to split. Woo! The enemy just doesn't want to rock your boat. He wants to split what was one and make it two. He wants to come in and split what was one and make it two. In other words, he wants to come in and divide. He wants to come in and separate. He wants to come in and pull apart what was one. That ship was, meant, was made as one to withstand storms, to withstand waves, and the enemy was going to come in or the Lord was going to allow it to break in half. Whoo. Because of one's disobedience. Jesus. And then he was asleep on the boat. How do you fall asleep in a storm? There is no anesthetic that will knock you out like sin. There is no anesthetic that will knock you out like sin. 
In other words, your sin is like an anesthetic, and when you continue to do it, it's going to make you oblivious to what's going on around you. In other words, if the, everybody else is being rocked, you're not going to understand why. You're going to start arguing with them. You're going to start being offended by them. And it's all you because you're the one that has sinned and you're the one that has rocked the boat. But because your sin is so great now, it's like an anesthetic that's knocked you out and you are oblivious to what's going on around you. Woo! In the boat, what did they do? They threw out precious cargo. Jonah didn't throw out any precious cargo, but everybody in the boat had to get rid of precious cargo. Imagine that, having to get rid of precious cargo because one has rocked the boat. In other words, now you don't have peace. There goes that cargo, that precious cargo. Now you don't have love anymore because they've hurt you. There goes that precious cargo. Now you don't have kindness anymore. There goes that precious car car cargo. Now you don't have joy anymore. There goes that precious cargo. Now you don't have that car anymore because they wrecked it because they were high and they crashed it. There goes that precious cargo. Now you've lost your house because now if the boat has been rocked and now you're divided and now he does his thing and you do your thing. Oh, you've lost precious cargo and there goes your children running amok because the dad isn't standing in as a priest of the home. There goes your precious cargo. Are you causing someone else to lose precious cargo because you took in an anesthetic and it's knocked you out. Woo! You can't tippy toe in your sin, maybe around others, but the Lord hears all. The Lord hears you sneaking. The Lord hears you tiptoeing. -to and guess what? You're starting to cause a wave now. Even the slightest touch of water will start to cause a ripple. Your sin will start to cause a wave. And pretty soon, it'll get greater and greater and greater and greater. Why? Because you won't stop. You won't yield. You won't repent because you want to feed your flesh. So now the waves are blowing. Now they're coming. Now you can't take it. Oh, God, I don't know why. Oh, Lord, they did this. They... No, it's you that have caused the waves because you started tippy-toeing in sin. And now the waves have grown so big. So then what? Let's just go one. Mm -mm -mm. They throw them out of the boat. Be careful you don't get thrown out of your boat. Wow. They threw him out of the boat. And the fish came and ate him up. God is mighty that he can cause a fish to open his mouth, that he can cause a donkey to speak, that he can cause ravens to go to Elijah and have Elijah fed bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. God is so mighty that he can call two, two uh, animals each and go on to Noah's ark. God is so mighty. The word of God says in Colossians 1.17, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He is so mighty. So don't worry about your children. If God can call two animals to an ark, if God can call ravens to feed Elijah, if God can cause a fish's mouth to open, God can cause your children to be caught by him and to speak up for him. God has your children, no matter where they're at, no matter what they're doing, no matter what has happened, God has your children. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. He gets into the belly of the fish, and I said, why the belly, Lord? And the Lord said this, what does a belly do? A belly digests? A belly breaks down and a belly gets rid of waste. He said, I was going to have him go in the fish because he was going to digest, thus saith the Lord. And he was going to get it broken down within him until he had to cry out repentance, until he had to cry out, I'm sorry. He was going to swallow what I said. Not only swallow what I said, but he was going to have it, God was going to have it broken down within him. And then he was going to get rid of the waste. The rebellion, he was going to get rid of it, but he first had to chew on, thus saith the Lord. He had to break it down. Some of you need to break it down. Some of you need to chew on so you can get rid of the waste, the re 
rebellion, the disobedience unto the Lord. Repentance is powerful. We say we got to get to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is you haven't repented. We got to get to the root of the problem. Repentance is so powerful that imagine this. When Jonah repented, it caused the fish's mouth to open up and then push him out and spit him out and to where he should be, to his calling and to his destiny. That's how powerful repentance is, that it will spit you out. Whatever's holding you, it'll cause to open and it'll spit you out right into your destiny. There's power in repentance. If you get in an accident and you can't get out because the car is mangled, what do they send? The jaws of life. The Lord told me repentance is like the jaws of life. Repentance will get you out of any kind of trap. Repentance will cause that trap, the enemy's grip, to loosen you. Repentance is so powerful, it's like the jaws of life. No matter what you're in, no matter how squeezed or pressured you are, God says, if you just repent, I will be as the jaws of life and open up that thing that has touched you and strangled you and tried to cause you to come to death so you can escape. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way. So if I go the wrong way, I'm not going the way, right? He is the way, the truth. So if I go the wrong way, I'm not going the way of the Lord. And I'm not believing the truth, I'm believing a lie. And he is the life. If I'm going the wrong way, I'm not going to believe the truth because I'm believing a lie. And if I'm not going towards life, I'm going towards death. If you're not going towards life, you're on the broad road of destruction. But if you're going the way, the truth, the way, and the life, you're on the narrow path which leads to life. When Jesus was in the temple at 12 years old, he began to preach. And they marveled at him, and they were astounded by him. His last, and in between, his last sermon on the cross, The most powerful sermon ever preached was from the pulpit of the cross. And there was an in-between. John the Baptist preached repentance. Isaiah preached repentance. Jonah preached repentance. John the Baptist said, the kingdom of God is at hand. No, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And look at Jesus. He said the very same words as John the Baptist. He said, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, he just wasn't going to preach repentance. When Jesus got on the cross, he was repentant on our behalf. He cried out repentance on the cross for you and for I. In other words, he just wasn't going to preach it. He was going to do it. Some of you just want to preach it, but you don't want to do it. And Jesus set an example for us when he went to the cross. He cried out on the cross, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. There's power in repentance. As soon as he said that, as soon as it was done, the graves opened up. The veil was rent. Oh, God, our Savior made a way. There's power in repentance. The Bible says in Matthew 3, 8, produce good fruit by keeping with repentance. Produce good fruit by keeping with repentance. So if if they don't have fruit, they're not keeping with repentance. You'll know them by their fruit. If they have no fruit, you know they haven't repented. If you see good fruit, you know they've been keeping with repentance. They've been on their knees and they've been surrendering unto the Lord. Repentance has fruit. Let's go to Psalms 51. Psalms 51 is one of the greatest passages in the entire Bible concerning confession and forgiveness. Psalms 51, verse 8, I just want to show you the power of repentance. That's why it's so hard for you guys to repent, because there's so much fruit in it. There's so much power in it. 
Psalms 51, 8 says, Make me hear joy and gladness. This is when David was confronted about Bathsheba. Nathan came to him, and now he's convicted, and now he's going to repent. And this is his cry of repentance. Psalms 51, verse 8, it says, Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. you got to understand that he wanted to hear God's forgiving voice, so he was repenting. That's why he was saying, Make me to hear joy and gladness. He wanted to hear his forgiving voice, and his bones were not broken, but from the weight and the crushing of sin, he felt like his bones were broken, and he needed a relief, so he was crying out repentance, so he wouldn't feel, he wouldn't feel the pressure of that crushing sin upon him, it wouldn't feel like his bones were broken, and then he goes to say, hide thy face from thy sin, repentance will cause the Lord to hide his face from your sin, repentance will cause the Lord to blot out all your iniquities. Repentance will cause the Lord to create in you a new heart and restore a right spirit within you. Repentance will cause the Holy Spirit to draw nigh unto you and you unto him. Repentance will return the joy of your salvation. That's the fruit of repentance. <laughs> Woo! Jonah was in the belly of the well, and what did he do? He was facing judgment, just like the people that he was going to go to. They were facing judgment. And what did Jonah do? Jonah repented, just like the people he was going to go to. They had to repent. Jonah was going to do it first before he went and preached it. Some of you want to do it, and you, you want to preach it, but you don't want to do it. God wants you to do it, so then you can go preach it. <laughs> Woo! You don't want to miss it. Jonah almost missed it. To miss means this. To err, to slip, to make a mistake, to fail, to hit, to catch, to encounter, to miss fire, to miss the target, and oversight. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss the mark because you continue to do what you know God has told you not to. So today is a day of repentance. Will you turn from your way? Will you stop and say no more? You can't kill the messenger. I'm just a mailman. I'm just a plumber. I'm just a locksmith. I'm just the one coming to iron the linen. Woo, you don't want to miss it. Let us all stand. Psalms 81.8 says, Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you, O Israel, if you would listen to me. Can I have the music, please? Maybe you, some of you need to throw off your shoes. Maybe some of you are one foot in and one foot out. You know what you're doing. You're not blinded to your sin, but you're blinded by it. Be careful. So I'd like to open the altar up. I'm going to do a corporate prayer. I'm going to just open the altar up. If you want to repent this morning, if you have conviction in your heart this morning, and you don't want to cause that storm or that break or that dividing in your work or in your home or in your church, and you know it's you, come on, come up. serious because God never promises us tomorrow. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody in here that's never received the Lord Jesus Christ into their hearts? You've never said, Father, forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. If you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, can I just have you raise your hand if you've never said that prayer? You don't want to miss it? Just raise your hand. I'm not going to call you up here. Just need to see your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. 
and all the intercessors, can you be praying too as I pray for the people? Just stretch your hands forth the, towards them, please. Father, we come before you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, Father. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for the hearts, Father, being touched today, God. Lord, that those that have came up here, Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they're not going to miss it, Lord. Those that have came up here, Lord, with hearts of repentance, Father, saying, I'm sorry, Lord. I thank you, Father, that they don't miss it, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that they have that ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Father. I thank you for drawing them unto you, Lord. I thank you for them kicking off that shoe, that thing, that sin that's hurting them and harming them and causing them to go in two different directions, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your mighty hand that is upon them right now, Lord. I thank you for deliverance right now, Lord. I thank you for delivering them out of their sin, Lord, out of their bondage, Lord. I thank you for delivering them, Father, from mind-binding spirits, Lord. I thank you for deliverance, Lord, from unclean spirits, God. I thank you for deliverance, Father, from anger and rage, Lord. I thank you for deliverance right now, Father, that you have your way from hopelessness and despair. I bind you up in the name of Jesus. Woo. Say, Father, Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. Lord, Lord. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. In my life. In my life. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Help me to walk right, Father. Help me to walk right, Father. And not grieve the Holy Spirit. Not grieve the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a great big clap offering. Oh, come on, give him a great big clap offering. If you could be seated for just a few minutes. How many enjoy?